guys welcome back to the software testing tips and tricks channel in this video we will go through the black box versus white box testing so all those who are already working in the software industry they already know what is black box testing and white box testing but in this video we will go through that in the detail like when to perform black box testing what are the types of black box testing what is functional versus non-functional testing what are the techniques uh, of black box testing same in white box testing most of the people are may not familiar uh, with white box testing they just know like whenever you are testing code it is white box testing but what are the testing types what to cover in white box testing how it is helpful what are the disadvantages in the white box testing so all this we will uh, go through in the video so please uh, watch the full video and so before starting please subscribe this channel and share it to your QA friends uh, so let's start So let's go with uh, our car analogy only because in like previous videos I have created for uh, sanity smoke and regression and uh, uh, integration unit and uh, system test I have used same uh, model so I am using that cars uh, example only so for example you are testing a car internally so I am talking about white box testing where we are we test the code right so to understand in more in real life for example when car is made it has an engine and engine has lot of parts so there are possible like when you are drive the car or you are uh, <clears throat> just checking car like if it is working properly or not you may not encounter all the engine flows so to do this uh, expert can do who, who made the engine or who understand the engine they can do so what they can do is like they can go through each parts of the engine and make sure like all the parts are working so what happens like whenever uh, like in real life when you, are, you see some errors in the car you don't understand what error is or if you understand you don't know how to regenerate that error so in that part like uh, uh, to test this kind of things in the engine like directly it don't come when you buy a new car you don't uh, encounter with any errors right so they do uh, engine testing so in that engine they go through all the possible uh, uh, smallest part and try to verify like uh, if all the parts work correctly or not so they give input such a way or you they give some uh, <coughs> like if you are filling the oil or you are uh, accelerating the engine or uh, they are making temperature high low so th they are doing that way that each part of the point all the points of the engine gets hit at least once so this is what white box testing is right so we will talk in the detail uh, in the next slide but this is the with example I am giving you so that you can understand and want uh, you will remember for a long time so for like uh, now for black box testing you are testing actual car so I bought a car I don't know what how engine is made or how brakes are made but I can use it so I push the brake and car should stop so that is the functionality so I, when I push the brake so what happens internally I don't know it is completely black for me so it is a black box testing but I know car should stop when I press the brake right so that is what black box testing is you don't know how functionality is implemented but you know the functionalities <clears throat> so your goal is to achieve all the functionalities should be tested and it should work as per design or as per uh, users uh, uh, com comfort comfortability so you can uh, in black box testing to do achieve this we perform uh, different kind of testing like functional testings like in that uh, we go to feature testing and non-functional testing in which we try to perform like uh, performance testing load testing security testing kind of this so this, this is what black box testing is so let's discuss our white box testing in the detail so for example your code is written which has this kind of nodes and this is the flow so in this uh, uh, diagram you can show multiple flows are possible like user can go through from 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 7, 7 to 8 that is one flow second is like 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to again 1 so there is a loop and uh, so you, if you so, see like at 7 we are seeing the loop 7 to 1 and we are seeing uh, cases at 2, 4, 3 uh, and at 7 we are seeing the merger so 7 node is very critical so we, are, we can have like different kinds of paths possible so so many paths possible here so to test this uh, without knowing the internal structure of code you may not 
go through some parts uh, externally like if you don't know the feature how it is implemented so it you may miss uh, some of the parts but when you <coughs> perform white box testing so that time <coughs> you make sure like all the parts are covered so for that what you do is like you give input such a way that at least uh, code go through that path once so that is what white box testing is so white box testing is so it name suggests right it has white box so we can see the code or how it is implemented so it is sometimes called uh, glass box testing as well as clear box testing as well so these are the types of white boxing like now we go through white box versus black box testing <clears throat> so here is the white box so in white box we have different types of testing like uh, testing condition testing data flow testing loop testing so that is testing tips uh, we can say techniques so in conditional testing you see the condition you try to make false condition one time you true so that is only two options possible in data flow testing <clears throat> you go through the all the flows like what we have seen and in loop testing you go through the loop try to break the loop in between and uh, try to give you such an input that loop kind of, uh, takes forever or something like that if it is possible so this is what uh, testing techniques we use in white box testing whereas in black box testing we use boundary value analysis equivalence partitioning and error guessing so boundary value analysis is like you are testing with boundary values this is the most region where we tend to find the bug so for example in elevator if we support 300 kg of weight so if uh, so i need to test that elevator what i do i will test with 299 kg 300 kg 301 kg so there like uh, i will see like it should work as expected equivalence partitioning is uh, like partitioning your inputs so that you you can minimize the inputs for example like uh, again in lift example if you support 300 kg so i can uh, make the uh, two partition like 0 to 300 and 300 to 400 and in that uh, I will uh, provide different kinds of weight I can choose one weight or I can have like 100 100 kg partition 0 to 100 100 to 200 200 to 300 300 to 400 and I choose like 50 150 250 350 and I give all input and I will check like uh, how it is performing so this is what equivalence partitioning is error guessing is like guessing the error so sometimes we know like here it may come the error for example sometimes the <coughs> input box is there and uh, you try to give some special characters or uh, some uh, sql injection uh, one right so you may get the error so this is what like error guessing is so now like functional versus non-functional testing so in black box testing we can divide it to in functional testing and non-functional testing so we have these types like unit testing, integration testing, sanity smoke testing, localization testing, and regression testing. So unit sanity I have already talked in previous videos, but uh, uh, those are functionality testing. We are actually we are testing something in the product. So we are testing the features like if those are working or not. Regression testing I make the star because some people don't consider it functional testing and give a separate. Uh, uh, type but it is kind of uh, functional testing only right where you are testing the functionality but it, it is not new functionality it is older functionality but you are the testing the functionalities so it is a kind of functional testing only whereas in non-functional testing you have performance testing load testing security testing and compatibility testing so where you check the like how product uh, is uh, powerful like if how, how is the performance how is the load uh, what is compatibility security is there or not so those are non-functional testing where you are not checking actual functionalities but uh, you are checking the performance of the product so those are the types uh, sometimes unit and integration testing some people consider it white box testing as well because you are actually writing into code but as far as uh, like current in current and uh, scenarios like s data are performing your uh, unit and integration testing so may be possible they are don't know the actual code but they just know the method and writing code around so it is a kind of black box testing only but uh, you can say gray box testing <laughs> yeah so this is the confusion there and in white box testing uh, mostly uh, nowadays like s -Debt can perform white box testing if they have code knowledge right so how it is helpful one way is like uh, if you are know the code and you try to go through all the like 
uh, loops or conditions from there you can find the test cases and give it to qa who is function doing black box testing so he knows like if you he does like that that, that, that it goes to that scenario and where there it may become the error so that that is how like uh, functional and non functional or uh, white box and black box uh, testing can be do, can be done together so now like uh, benefits of uh, this testing so in uh, uh, functional testing what we see white box testing it is like critical to find the flaws so it is very helpful there it optimizes the code like if you do some multiple time you can optimize the code it can be start in earlier state whenever code is written and it it, it is easy to automate so but you, if you see if you are working in the company so you mostly don't see like uh, uh white box testing perform that much time because it is very costly like you have to occupy one resource which is full code knowledge in testing the thing again in testing if they found something so there is possibility to optimize the code and after rewrite code you need to do perform that uh, practice again so also that's why we need the multiple retesting and it is uh, expensive also sometimes if missing functionality is there means code is not there how we can know like uh, this code is working fine or not so missing functionalities cannot be found in white box testing whereas in black box testing it is actually nearer to how user uses that product and uh, that's why it is very important and where we are providing functional and non functional testing in that so it will make sure like the product is durable and uh, it makes the quality appropriate so it don't care about the code much like how internally bit but it all, or always make uh, uh make sure like the pro product is usable uh, as uh, how it should be so this is how what benefits of black box testing so if you have watched the full video click on like button and please subscribe this channel also share it to your key friend and if you have any doubts feel free to ask in the comments or uh, you can join our social media pages in facebook twitter i used to keep on sharing memes so so it memes are on software testing only so you can just check that out and if you like that like this page and you can put message there as well so that's it thank you guys